Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so one of the things I wanted to talk about real quick is we were aware of an issue where certain items were not showing up uh, in search on Marketplace. Like you could still go directly to the product page and see them, uh, but it wouldn't show up in product search or inside the manage listings page. And we found out about that about fr last Friday, I believe. Um, and we decided to investigate that like right away. And we found that for some reason, some items were not indexing properly. So we started re-indexing them. And right now, or as of right now, it should be resolved for everyone. Over the past couple of days, it was, should have been resolving for most people. But as of today, now it should be fixed for everyone. So there shouldn't be any issues now with any items not showing up. Uh, everything should be back to normal. But if you are having an issue, please let us know, and then we'll investigate it for you. Yeah, I, I totally understand why it would cause a lot of panic. We, we're not entirely certain um, what exactly caused it, but during like some routine maintenance, some items, not all of them, some items were just not indexing correctly, uh, but we were able to fix it and everything is resolved now. So big apologies on our part, uh, but if you are having any issues, please feel free to reach out. We are planning on doing that, yes. So we, ha we have a status blog that we were investigating it. Um, now that we've got it figured out and fixed, uh, we'll be posting something very shortly about uh, the re-indexing that it is all fixed. Uh, so some other things I want to talk about is we do have some exciting changes that are very, very close to coming out. Uh, we did blog about one of them a little while ago about best-selling sort changing for marketplace stores in particular. If you go directly to someone's store and you sort by best-selling, it's now going to look at how well those items in your, in your particular store have been selling over the past 30 days and then sort that accordingly. So that, that's been like a long-standing sort of bug that's been going on that we've now rectified, and that will be coming out really shortly, along with some other changes that we're not quite ready to talk about, but should be pretty exciting. Right, so at, over the last 30 days, which would be not over the entire course of history. Uh, so I have a couple questions that I'm curious about. We've had um, some pretty cool JIRA tickets come in, and I even saw a petition about this. I'm curious on people's thoughts around showing limited quantities or limited quantity items in search um, and why they either think it's a good thing or a bad thing. I might have to um, talk on this one. Can you hear me? Sorry, my voice never works in SL very well. Okay. Um, do you mean that if I was asking for combat boots, that it's only going to show me like 20 sets of combat boots and not 487 pages of combat boots? So if you were to, you know how uh, if you're doing a search, you can filter out limited quantity items. There's like a checkbox on the left. Actually, oh, you might limited. not know that. Okay, sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. I, I misunderstood. Yes, that. I, I love that function. Um, so a lot of people feel that we should have that checked by default or just not include limited quantity items in search. Um, dude, for like multiple different reasons. And I was curious on people's ideas around that, like if they feel like that's a good idea or a bad idea. I 
can't the sorry I can't see it being a problem only because I can see it being an issue for people that are not really familiar with Second Life, Garcha resellers and the like by mistake buying something that they're not buying from the actual seller. So uh, I think it would cancel that out. I mean, I know I actively do it so that I can find gotchas when I'm looking for something, but yeah. I don't know. That's that seems really messy in the sense of we already know what we're used to, so it would be hmm. Yeah, I've heard a lot of the the main reason why is because of gotchas. Oh, it's definitely because of gotchas, <laughs> and also because you don't know you you don't realize if you're new you don't realize you're not buying from the person that made it so then you've got no customer support if it's broken you've got nothing there so so eliminating it is good but then you don't necessarily know a gacha exists unless you stumble across it as well it's weird Oh yeah, because of full perms creation. Is that would that be why Neri? Yeah, full perms creators sometimes only sell like twenty items um of their item. So that would be a problem there too. I think that a lot of the problem is that it's so far down on the left that you can completely miss that you have the option. I think having that stuff running across the underneath of the other uh, options that we have, like underneath the search components, uh, where you type in or you select merchant store, if those were there, like filter, actual filters, like when you go to Airbnb and you want a place with air conditioning and you need to have a pool and, you, you know, it would be really cool if it was up the top. Um, and then that gives you the option to add more features as you go because you'll have it in that sort of area. Okay. For people who, who do use that feature of the... Do, do not show limited quantities. Why are you using it most of the time? Yeah, I figured gotcha resells was the, the main reason why people use that. Right, whereas the, the ones with permissions is, it, that's also another, like that whole bottom left section needs to come to the top because it's so helpful to be able to just check mark something that's transfer because you want to, you don't care. Like, for instance, you know, when you're doing a vendor ad or something like that, or you're just shooting some sort of thing where you, you need multiple avatars, sometimes grabbing gotcha hair, <laughs> the same hair that you can just pass around your alt just for the, for the quick snapshot of it all is handy. But all of that really needs to be up the top. Permissions, limited quantities, and demo part. I mean the items that you get out of the gotcha are no copy or the gotcha itself is no copy?
the whole thing's no copy usually. Ah, gotcha. Unintended. Uh, so we talked about potentially making that checked by default. Uh, how would people feel about limited quantity items being just their own category? Yes. And maybe two, like limited quantity resellers, limited quantity full perms merchants, perhaps, because... Yes, there is already a gotcha category. I've honestly never gone to the gotcha category. I can honestly say a very, I never actually use any of the categories. Interesting. Um, why haven't you used any of the categories before? You just never need to do? Uh, they tend to be, one, overwhelming when they say something like there are 226,094 avatar accessories. It doesn't really mean much. Um, but I generally shop marketplace because I know what I'm looking for. So it can either be I'm blindly looking for something um, of a nature like, again, i.e. a combat boot, you know, or a tartan skirt or something like that. I'm, I'm living my punk life today, apparently. Um, but <laughs> but if um, I often uh, just search merchant, I know the designer that I'm looking for or just to see if they have new stuff on Marketplace. It's just what I'm used to. But categories is not something I generally go to. Uh, when you say you search the merchant, do you like put the store name into search or do I you just guess. go directly to the store? I type in usually the creator because I don't know what you did to that search function for store and creator, but it doesn't work the same as it used to. Something changed there too. Uh, so are you using the, the product search or the merchant search? Merchant search. Merchant search, okay. And then you type in their name and you try to go to the store? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, curious, what, well, how was it working before that you you don't see it working as now? I don't know. Some people, uh, I don't think you can type a store name now or it wasn't coming up the same. You might have tweaked it. It was like when you did the first change to Marketplace about five months ago or something, suddenly something was not the same because I used it a hundred times a day and then suddenly it wasn't functioning the same so I, I can't really my my sl uh marketplace usage has changed a little bit so i can't exactly um name what it was that's changed mm -hmm. it just seems different one of the changes we did make uh during that search change was merchant stores don't pop up in product search they only pop up in merchant store search so that might be what you're referring to b could be. Oh, well, yeah, a lot of people will put like... Um... That was it. I couldn't suddenly just type in the thing. Oh, yes. We spoke about that, I think, before when you had an exact name of something and it included the brand name. It was not giving you the results that right. you should have yep. been getting. That was harmful. That is still harmful if that's still the case. It's harmful. You mean like it's bad for merchants? very bad for merchants because when you're when you're looking at uh experiences like you know a new person or any person finds out what somebody is actually wearing during dur using a what is she wearing hat or something like that um and they've just got it or or somebody's just thrown a name at them or they've read a blog and somebody's credited with just the n the name of the brand and an item they can't find it that way whereas they used to be able to just put in that information and if you're not savvy enough with um, marketplace to then put it in merchant and then you know I think it messed up with garchas too if you were looking for a specific garcha you couldn't find it anymore 
Neri, uh, do you have an example? Like a fancy Unicode? A weird spacing? So I think you, you mentioned a tool where you can look at what someone's wearing. Yeah, so what is she wearing, HUD? Oh, okay. How do you not know about this, Mr. Linden? <laughs> what is she wearing, HUD, right? <laughs> I'm so disappointed in you right now, but I'll pass you one because the owner made it that you can pass them because that's what they want. So I can click my HUD and it will give me every name in this room and then I will click their name and it will give me an open chatter list of everything that they're wearing. And then it will actually include um, a creator a button so you can go to their profile. So it's it's very handy for customer service. It's very handy to find out if something's been copy botted, et cetera, et cetera. So it has multiple functions. Uh, for metrics on the listing enhancements, what kind of metrics would you like to see? Definitely start giving you some. You could give me like a top three metrics you'd like to see. impressions and then click through, right? Thank you. That item is actually a good uh, representation of search. Um, you can't type what's she wearing, which is what usually everybody calls it. You can't type what is she wearing because you won't get that creator's item. You'll get everybody else's item. Um, and unless you know the creator, whereas it used to be possible to bring them up much easier. Thanks for the link, I'll check that out. So you said the, um, the what is she wearing is a good example of why search can be hard sometimes. So you're, you're, the keywords you're using are what is she wearing? Well, most people call it the what's she wearing, HUD, because... Oh, what's just she wearing, okay. Down. Yeah, but you can't find it like that because it is the what is she wearing, HUD. But then if you type in what is she wearing, it, now people are are using that as you know keywords or whatever they're doing to to do the same thing or sell a similar product 
but he was the only one that used to come up because um, it was able to be searched that way before because I know I went to that so many times and now it's not the same. Is there any other types of metrics people would like to see other than around PLEs? Or product listing enhancements, as they're called? Interesting. So you're actually using it a lot for customer service. Like you can check to see if they're actually wearing the item Absolutely. that they bought. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it 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 can also help with somebody's actually wearing five of something. Like I've helped helped people in the past that have been new enough to have worn everything from a folder, and because it's the same dress or the same pair of pants, but in the various body sizes, and they've got all of them on. But you can't necessarily tell by just looking at them, but you can tell from that. So you're able to say to them, you need to take four of those off <laughs> and just leave the one on for your body type or, you know, any number of things. You've got six eyeballs attached or things like that. Yeah, I definitely feel like it's a rite of passage in SL to accidentally wear all the items. Absolutely. At least everything doesn't contain a pose stand anymore because they were not attractive hats. Uh, okay, so like something else they're wearing might be breaking what you're trying or your product that they're trying to wear. Correct, that too. Yeah, that's a good one because they might be using the same channel. I uh, was curious if anyone here uses the favorites list in the marketplace. Like you may favorite a store and then add it to a list. I do occasionally. And then I um, go back to it. Like a lot of times I'll see things through the year that might be good for landscaping for hair fair. And then I go back to it the next year pre hair fair and see if there was anything I had done that way. It's very handy. I like it. Do you ever use favorites to check up to see if your favorite stores have posted something new or do you use it a different way? Or if you actually want to find out if one of your favorite stores has posted new, how do you do it? Never thought to use it that way, <laughs> to be honest. Because of all the way we're marketed to, we usually know our favorite stores have something new. You follow their Flickr or something? Yeah, usually. But um, now that it's been brought up and Neri says she uses it that way all the time, I might consider that. I just never thought about it that way. It was more of a, a putting stuff in a trolley that's not a trolley sort of thing. And hey, um, how do you I check that list for new updates? But that's not what I use. Do you like go inside the uh, bears list and then just kind of poke around or is there something else that you do it? Thank you.
Oh, cool. Okay, so use the sword order. It might be a good thing for those uh, SL University videos that you do to actually focus a bit more on those little hidden features. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I have a question for you. <laughs> the wish list function, I've seen it in people's profiles. I don't, it's not a thing, but I've gone to people's wish lists just out of curiosity. Um, is there, does it remove the item if the item's purchased? I want to say it does. I'd have to double check, but I don't think it does. So if you get the item and you don't remove it, then somebody else could waste their lindens on buying you the same item. I would wonder if it would get delivered. What do you mean? Are you, if you gifted the item to that person is what you're asking, right? Right. Well, it, that's the point of the wish list, right? Is that some, uh, other people can shop for you? I thought it is kind of hard to get to people's wish list because you have to have like the direct URL link. Right. And you'll actually find that people put them in their profiles. They're in people's profiles. Um, some of the uh, escorts will have uh, wish lists in their profiles. Uh, the financial dominatrixes will have them in their profiles, etc. I was thinking the same thing, Neri. I was like, I'm not quite sure because I know if you buy it, it removes it. But I, I think if it gets gifted, it might not remove it. Which is strange because, as I said, I thought that was the point. Yeah. Like when wedding pe people are getting married or whatever, or baby showers, they make those things in department stores. So I thought it was the same thing. Aha, so it does remove it. Thank you for checking on that for me. Thank you. I'm guessing you want multiple wish lists, so you could have a wish list for certain different items. Like these are the wish. This is the wish list for people buying me stuff, and this is the wish list for stuff I want to buy, or maybe even like an, a bunch of items that you're not planning on buying. You just want to have a list of them. You're thinking like different categories, different types of items, I suppose. I definitely want to give you shareable lists. It, they're shareable where you can give a direct URL link and only if like you might manually type it in and then put it in like a profile like list or something like I can't go to someone's profile on Marketplace and then find it organically. And you yeah, can't share nice. it, it's just difficult. I'm curious why you would have it, say, fulfilled instead of removing it. <laughs> it's 
sorry. <laughs> Such a go go thing to say. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. It might also be nice if if you if it did say fulfilled and then maybe only visible to you, it showed you who fulfilled it so that you know years later you remember that it was gifted to you and it was gifted by this person the amount of times people have said to me that they didn't know how they got their item or they can't re-deliver it because it was a gift or because not all vending systems work the same way that sort of thing the best things that you ever did in marketplace in my opinion was putting the banner up there that says you've already bought it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you have so much stuff, it's hard to remember. It's also cute, though, if you've gifted it many times, because then it just ends up with this, like, 10 times different dates you've purchased the item. The other question I had was, if you're doing a search, um, what sort of order do you normally like to use? Do you like to use relevance, or is there any other ones you normally like to use? I had some people ask for newest first is the one that they like to use the most for just default product search. Um, I think it's a good but I'd be feature. surprised if people like that. Really? Because if you go to a store often, you want to see newest first. You know that they're active. Relevance can really throw a person because you think that that's all there is. Like you have to actually be aware that the drop down even exists to know that that's all there is. I totally understand that if you're going and looking at someone's store, particular like a particular store. But if you just like type in a keyword into like product search, like we did with like um, what's the name of that thing again? What is she wearing? Like if you just went to no. general product search and typed in a keyword, would you prefer to use newest first there still? Yes, I'd prefer newest because uh, you can unfortunately end up going through sixteen, twenty-seven pages of older content before you find something that might work. Like you're still getting, we're still getting fed sculpties. Really? Okay. Yeah, the review, the review thing needs to be looked at. Oh, I actually saw a review. Sorry, question. I saw a review the other day that had no words, but it had a stars, had stars. I didn't think that that was possible. So the only thing I could think of was that maybe the person left Second Life. I'm not sure. Maybe you could oh, use. Oh, there we go. Okay. You could actually like type in stars using some fancy Unicode or something. No, 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 this was the star process was used, like the buttons that you have to pick the, the rating, except there, were mm -hmm. no, there was no actual review because so many people would prefer to be able to leave the stars and not leave the evidence or any words because they're shy or they don't want to actively endorse a product, but they believe that the, the product deserves the rating. I know it's weird, but it's true. Would merchants like it if people could only leave reviews of just stars and, and no description or, or text? Yes. I've seen it written in content creators groups many times. They've said the same. Because often the words are not even relevant to what's what's happening and it just muddies the waters. But also I think every single customer would, not every, 
okay, sorry, hyperbole. I think a lot of people would start actually leaving reviews if they could just do the stars. And then once they're in there because they think they can just do the stars, maybe they'll write something. It could only win-win. You can comment on other people's reviews if they've left them. But yeah, that's a hole there. Really? So if, if you buy something in world, you'd want to leave, be able to leave a review in some way, but you can't do that unless you actually bought it through the web. Right. It's a pretty cool idea. I'll talk to the engineering team and see if we can do something about that. That's a really cool idea. That would mean, though, that the, the vending system in World would have to be linked to your marketplace in some way. But, yeah, it would be helpful. I like to buy in World too because I like them to actually benefit from paying tier each month. Yeah, that's a fair point. It, how do you find if you're going to buy something in World? Do you just find them in World, or do you like look them up a marketplace and then go to their in World store? Often in World uh, marketplace is a catalog. Yeah, so you can sort of like see their stuff in marketplace, but then often because a lot of content creators don't marketplace every single release and then you'll know that this isn't all they have so then you'll tp to their store that kind of thing it's kind of like malls from the olden days you'd you'd go to a mall you'd discover a store and you'd think oh this store looks interesting, so you'd see if they had a main, and then you'd go to the main and you'd buy everything in sight. And a lot of stores these days don't put their demos on Marketplace, so you have to go and demo them in the store anyway. Yeah, that's really true. Do you um, know why that is? reasons i was actually just about to ask what 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 do people like and dislike about using demos on the actual web marketplace it's the reviews it's that people can leave a review that's why they don't list their demos on marketplace because they can be slammed in a review that's what i've heard as well without making a purchase Right, but what there, what what's happening is a lot of a lot of merchants in the past have actually had people troll, attack other store competition, attack their demos just to just completely shatter the the store, and were able to do it through demos because they didn't have to buy anything. So it's it's a, so if demos didn't have the review option would probably change things there the demos would probably start getting listed again So I've heard two things about reviews today. Uh, being able to leave a review with just the star rating and also not being able to leave a review for demo items. Is there anything else that we'd want to change with reviews? Tagging system for bad reviews? What about being able to reply to reviews? 
that's already easy enough to do. You can comment under any review, so that's not a problem, but I found that the flagging reviews is very limited in what your options can be. And one of the worst reviews, op, uh, things that people do is they leave a one star review because they want customer service. Ah, okay. And then you provide the customer service and they don't always take down the review because they just forget. So you're trying to flag it, but you can't flag it because there's no actual category for it. So then you end up flagging it with some Ugh. horrible category that is not really what's going on. I'll take a look at that ticket, Jerry. Sorry, I, I combined Jira and Neri. It would it would be nice if creators had more control over the um, removal of bad reviews, but then at the same time, that sort of uh, doesn't work in the customer's favour if every time somebody leaves a bad review the merchant is able to remove it. Whoever is in charge of the review system it seems to be hit and miss. Sometimes it can be you flag something and it comes down the next day and then sometimes you can flag something that's really toxic and three months later it's still there. Okay, that's good feedback. Right, anonymous reviews would be nice. But then again, how would you not know that it's just not all their friends? It's such a fine line. Yeah, no, I, I get that, Eri. I did love the uh, suggestion a couple of months ago or last month about uh, the reviews where we would click the person that left the review and then see their review history. Somebody here made that suggestion and I thought that was epic, obviously, because I still remember it. And you can see if there's somebody who's like actually a a fair person you trust their reviews. Correct. Yeah, we talked about it. And, and then we were talking about the fact that that could turn into something really amazing where, you know, you could start looking at, at Neri's reviews and then uh, decide to see what they've bought at other places because you trust their judgment and it could actually create this shopping world within the world of, of reviews. follow option for reviewers is really interesting. Yeah, there's so many, like, I think that that, I, I don't know who made that suggestion. So I'm, I'm guessing they're not here or they are here. Or, uh, yeah, it was a fantastic idea, but it, it grows. Like there's just so much scope for that. Uh, you know, cause I mean, one there's a funny uh, Amazon as Gogo mentioned some of the funniest things is when you go to a review uh, for an item if you're going to buy it and the, and somebody leaves a review that says don't know don't have it and it's like it, <laughs> it's like they've gotten some sort of message about leaving a review or something and they've just ended up in there and and it's just amusing but that would be really interesting for us to sort of see, you know, oh my goodness, Go Go buys a lot of pink. I love pink too. I'm going to 
look at all the things that she's bought and given good reviews to. Or I was thinking of that that pair of shoes too, but she just said that this happened. So that's awesome. I won't buy them now until they fix it. I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a knowledge base article out there about it, but I'd have to go ask them. What's the number one uh, flag that you tend to use? Like if, if you had to say like, hey, like this is the review that I deal with the most, I have the flag of what would it be? In my experience, there isn't a category because that's what I'm. That's what I was saying. Like you, you've you've got hate speech and. Uh, hold on, let me see what the flags are. Flag this review. Yeah, we could yeah, maybe do that. Yeah, profanity or hate speech, inappropriate review, off-topic advertising or commercial promo. Inappropriate review is so random like a weird sort of thing if it's if it's somebody's actually given one star and said i need help <laughs> it's just it's a customer support issue not a review so a customer support flag would be great yeah it's a good suggestion been better the flagging thing has has a turn over time much faster lately i'll share that with them i'm sure they'll be happy to hear it maybe ask them as well what what you said what is the most ask them what they are have are getting flagged probably that's as i said if if a lot of the the items that are being flagged are for because it's a customer support issue because they've just misunderstood etc i'd also like uh, i think we talked about this before as well a, a breakdown of what the stars actually represent so people can be a little bit more equal to what they're leaving a review for I, I, I'm probably wording that the wrong way some people get really upset like one girl had an absolute meltdown on on Twitter a couple of months ago because somebody dared to leave her a four-star review and I tried to explain that to some people four stars is fantastic and they they will never give a five star it's not you it's them just like you know rating a movie or you know you're not going to give every movie you see tens and they just thought it was disgusting that anybody would bother like they were ropeable but i think if we actually had one star meant this five stars meant that if four was above average and five was excellent then somebody would actually be okay with getting four stars because it's above average, so if that makes sense. Uh, would anybody else in here be interested in changing from a five-star system to something else, like negative, neutral, or positive, or a thumbs up, thumbs down, or something? Oh, no. I want the five stars, just want each star to have a, a word attached to them that it 
means something. That helps people too to decide which star they want to give. Right, whereas four stars to most people means above average. It's five that means excellent. Essentially, if you gave five stars, I mean, I give, I, and, but if you gave five stars to a pair of black boots, it's essentially you're saying that there will never be a black boot any better than this black boot. So that's why some people give four stars. Right, and it would help if you could see if, uh, if they just constantly leave one-star reviews. Or if you can see if they only leave, no, if they leave a lot of one-star reviews but have on occasion left others. If they only leave one-star reviews, then you know that potentially the only time they ever leave a review is if it's bad. Right. That's, that brings us back to that. That, that would be awesome to be able to see their review history, uh, people's review history would be awesome. And again, it would come back to what Gogo said before about, uh, the wish list and, and others said the same fulfilled versus it just being removed. Uh, if people saw that people would be looking at them, <laughs> SL attention seeking since 2002. Um, if people saw, then it would mean that they might leave more reviews. And their merchants would be happy too if they were good reviews. I'm also like not sure what to do about anonymous reviews or not. I, I understand that like you can be leaving a review and it's a perfectly fine review. And, and then that kind of opens you up to toxicity of someone just retaliating to you for completely un, you know, unjustified reasons. Um, but I think there's also a lot of reasons why not having anonymous reviews is important. I don't know. I'm not sure about that one. The no words, but still your names attached is still decent. It's just that some people don't express themselves properly. English might not be their first language. It, any number of reasons. I think that if they can leave the stars, their name's still attached, that's still fine. That's funny though too, um, Amelia, that you said that though. I've actually seen uh, people leave reviews where they've actually said, I've owned this now for seven years and I thought I'd come today and leave a review. <laughs> so you never know when somebody's leaving a review unless they actually put it into words.
Oh. Oh, another thing that some people noticed the other day was people adding keywords to their store listings to benefit them because of the screen thing, like your beachwear thing at the moment, your promos, you know, when you say, you know, click here to see everything to do with beachwear. And so a whole lot of stores have added beachwear to their items so that they can be uh, front and center when they click that button. That's sort of a shady practice. I saw some textures in there the other day and that added beachwear to their keywords because I checked the source code. Which right. button are you referring to? You know how you've got the banners now? You do those artistically creative banners to sort of promote pride or promote summer or whatever. Oh, sure, yeah. The big thing, right. So people are using that to manipulate their attention. It's sort of like getting ad space without paying for ad space. Ah, okay. So they're, they're, they're using it to manipulate. And the other day I saw some textures and I looked at view page info to see what they'd actually done. And they had added beach wear in. And the texture was nothing to do with beaches whatsoever. But funnily enough, they actually had a beach category texture. <laughs> and they didn't do it to that one. And that one had popsicles and everything on it. So I'm not sure what you could do there. Just to make sure I'm understanding this uh Jira correctly two three one nine one zero it's a, just a category for sci-fi right community category yeah you've got you've got anime fantasy furry gore goth steampunk tiny and vampires but no sci-fi I actually want to know what's the difference between a community and a category. Like what's, what's the communities? That was a cool sound effect. Uh, okay, we're just now at the end. Um, I'll take a look at that ticket and see if I can get it prioritized for you. Uh, I also take a lot of that feedback back about the review system. Um, and also I'll go talk to the team who handles the flagging and, and get back the feedback that we gave and then ask them a couple questions about certain things. Keep an eye out on the, uh, the blog because there'll be a couple new updates coming around the corner uh, before we talk again, I'm pretty certain. And uh, if you have anything or any questions, feel free to message me. Yay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Everybody.